Alright, welcome to episode 26 of the Dotson 521 Restore, Resto Mod, whatever you want to call it. In this episode, I'm going to install the fuse boxes. I'm installing two fuse boxes, one for switched and one's non switched. And I'm installing the dash, painting the dash, uh, repairing some dash, putting some nut certs in there for glove box, cluster, all kinds of stuff. Some bunch of modifications to the dash and the stereo. And as you can see, uh, still doing the wiring. Wiring is a lot of work. Oh, let me show you something. Check this out. As you can see the light flash. We got marker lights. So, uh, Got all but well one more marker light to wire up, but it's uh, don't even have a battery yet. There's a fuse box. Actually, I think I'm gonna go buy a battery today. Actually, because I'm doing everything with a five amp laptop charger. So uh, yeah, this episode is about the fuse box install and the dash. So uh, enjoy. So here's the original license plate light. I painted the back black and the inside chrome. And uh, clean the lens. It's ready to go back on. Painted the other horns. I got two horns. I think legally only I need one. But I got two. And I made a bracket for it. Alright, so I just got my uh, headlight kit from eBay, from uh, Thailand, I should say. And here's the clips it came with. It's for a 620, I think it was for. These clips are exact same. As these Toyota style ones I found. Basically identical. The bolts are really long. The weird thing is it comes with four springs. Four headlights. That makes sense, right? 620. It comes with four bolts. Isn't there eight bolts? And four clips. Shouldn't there be eight clips? Whatever. What do I know? The bolts are way longer than the original. But really all I like cared about was the springs. And I was curious what these 620 clips look like. So is it... But the spring is... I think I measured the other one on camera. It's now installed, so I can't see it. <coughs> Man, I can't. Uh, I think it was 21 millimeter long on the spring. So these 620 springs are a lot longer. So uh, hopefully they'll work. Really, all I wanted, I paid like 18 bucks just for the springs. There's the uh, shortest springs I've ever found at Lowe's. They're like four bucks for two of these. Yeah. Oh, I got a bag right here. Yeah, there they are. <coughs> what are the dimensions? <coughs> they're three eighths, but uh, they're way too long. So I cut one in half and bent it up. They're kind of weak, but um, that's why I bought these from Thailand. I can't find any short springs. I'm sure there's somewhere online you can find them, but. Here's something interesting. The bottom bolts were screws, the top ones are bolts. Like this. I don't know if they're metric or not, but these are all bolts. But I can't get those back in, so I'm going to convert all those probably. I turn the key on, I got an ignition light on the headlights. I get a little light in there. Looks like I do on there as well. I turn on the uh, hazards. I get a light. Not this one. It's not flashing. The flasher's plugged in. If I turn on the turn signal to the left, I get a light, turn it off, goes off. The right side doesn't work, the oil light doesn't work. Got some stuff, if I turn the key to start, I do get 12 volts on the, the wire that goes to the starter. So that's good. I got a lot of stuff that doesn't work. Got a temporary fuse block set up here. One that's key powered, one that's always on. I'm trying to figure out what some of these wires are, especially with the distributor. I've got the headlights plugged in, but the headlights are not working. I'm not getting any power on the lights. So I think I might just put this harness back in the truck and troubleshoot what's what. All right, so we got ignition switch, lights, uh, wipers fan and hazards and that's it 
So I'm gonna take all this apart. Take this harness out of here. I think I'm gonna put three millimeter bolts in here. Place these weird nuts. I don't know what size these are, but they don't match the bolts in here. And they're not the same as my five millimeter, so I don't know what they are. So <coughs> they're getting up here the metric. I could put a three or a four in here. If I put a three, I don't need to drill the hole. I just need to put a washer. <coughs> so I think I'll just put a washer and put a three millimeter. And that'll fix that issue. There's the ignition switch. Comes down. Steering wheel switch. Cluster. And these are some of the switches. These are heater. Washer. And I got two more switches. And then here, this is the cluster that goes to the engine compartment. And I don't know what that goes to. Through the, oh, there's another hole in the dash in that firewall. That must go through the other hole. So whatever that goes to. Yeah, there was two holes. Okay, that makes sense. Let's take this dash apart. Ashtray. So looks like the two dashes are just bolted together. So I gotta get this harness out and then I can take out the upper dash and the lower dash and paint it. Hey, there's that green again. I just realized that's the same color as that the grill and the, the gas tank thing. Yeah, somebody butchered this uh, radio bezel thing. Somebody uh, made it bigger or something. So I'll fix that. Yeah, this is the bottom of the dash. Lots and lots of holes. I may put the little levers back on. Maybe. Let me just, there's the old steering wheel. I don't think I need any of these holes, actually. <laughs> I don't like things hanging on the bottom. It looks tacky. So here's how the dash is connected. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six bolts that connects the top steel to the bottom steel of the dash. And then I'll show them my radio all chewed up. Not sure what happened here. And then the ashtray. So let's take this thing into two pieces. Let's see, uh, I want to see if I can try to reupholster it. The top is pretty good. Yeah, there's a lot of little holes. It's just a piece of vinyl. All right, so I just got the dash into two pieces. And I was kind of shocked on how this is designed. There's a Phillips machine screw that's mounted top down. So obviously they bolted the top steel to the bottom steel. And then they upholstered it? No, that can't be possible. Because I don't know how they did that, but that's how it is, the Phillips screw. So it was really hard to get. I got five of them out, no problem. Six one, I just had to apply pressure while I was Unscrewing 7 16 and up. I don't know what size these are. I don't know if they're metric or standard. Probably standard. I'm not putting it back together that way, that's for sure. So these should be able to be nut inserted. So I can just screw up in. Or put a bolt in here. And I don't know. I'll figure it out. But it's definitely not going back the way it came apart. That is stupid. And there's little nuts on here for the air vents. It looks like somebody just broke off. So yeah, there's six bolts that hold the dash in the truck, two on the sides, four in the middle, six bolts that hold the two steels together. And I also noticed that this glove box and this dash are not interchangeable. I was thinking it was one dash for both trucks, but it's totally different mounting for the glove box. I gotta put some nuts in here as well. So I ran a little problem trying to put the seats back in. These are the bolts that the truck, the Ultima, must have come with because this is the new style. I think my Leaf and Center and Burst all had these. I don't know what my Frontier has. But um, these are the, I had tons of these. I had like 10 or 20 of these extra bolts. But these actually don't fit. It's weird. They don't fit on the right side, but they fit on the left side, oddly enough. But um, what I did is I modified them, just grinded or sanded down. The built-in washer. I love Nissan bolts because you know they got a built-in washer. It's high quality, but now they fit. So I don't want to use these Torx head style. There's nothing wrong with them. 
It's just that I don't want to introduce any Torx head bolts. The truck is like, you know, all regular metric bolts and some, a few standard. Last thing I need to do is uh, add Torx to the mix. So that's a little weird thing about, it's only these two rear bolts. All right, so here's the original 520 springs, I think. Here's the 620 springs. They're longer. And they don't work. So I gotta figure something out. I've got a crazy idea of just putting a brace across and a spacer. I don't know. I may just put a bolt through and have it pivot on a bolt. Here's the temporary springs I got. I cut it in half from Lowe's, cheapy ones. Anyways. 620 springs don't seem to work. They're just a little too long. So I finally got the uh, all the seat bolts are welded in, all eight of them. I threw that on some paint. Uh, still gotta paint this side a little more paint just for the hell of it. I'm working on the dash. I've got the dash. I got the double din hole. Cut a big hole in it. It was all bent. Somebody chewed it all up. So. The problem is now is trying to put in a modern double the radio. Let's see if I can hold this somehow. We got a little wiper clearance issue with a standard double in radio. I guess this is why nobody puts them in these trucks. They're too big. Which is kind of a shame because I have two extra double in reverse camera. Bluetooth radios left over that I could put in this thing so they don't fit as is. Oh, that's I mean, obviously, I could rework this linkage, put the seats back in. It's not very uncomfortable in here. I could move this linkage, just pop this off, make a new one, go across. I am going to move the wiper motor anyways for two reasons. One, I got to seal up this hole. So I'm thinking about moving the motor somewhere else or at least moving it closer in. Uh, and if I move it, because the glove box is kind of limited by this arm, I think. But anyways, uh, so I could just use these modern style radios. It's half the size. I don't really want to mess with the linkage. I'd rather, it seems like it works perfect as is, so we'll see about that. But either way, we gotta get a double dins going in here, one way or the other. I've got another radio. This one fits a little uh, differently. I still gotta like epoxy or something, make a mold around here. It's gonna be tricky to get rid of this bend. I'd rather have the radio deeper in than it's poking out. But you can see how there's a little bit of a clearance issue. It's like, don't turn on the wipers. Bad things will happen. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we'll figure it out. And then I gotta make a glove box. I don't have the glove box. I have two doors, but no box. All right, just put in an LED bulb, replace the original bulb. My newly painted, it works, I tested it. Even this connector looks terrible. Uh, I can't run a tap through these bolts and you can't take this bracket off, it's welded. So I'm just gonna run some stainless bolts. The other ones are half rusty. And I've ordered some taillights, 520 taillights, so I'm going to have to relocate these next and get rid of those bolts. Alright, so here's the taillight harnesses, or like marker light harnesses. These wires, ah, now they're clean. They were pretty black. I cut off an inch or so, and they're still, the copper is just black. So I'm going to soak in some uh, vinegar a couple hours. Now they are good to go. Oh, it looks so much better. Now I can solder on my lights. So there's the inside of my dash. You can see that rust. That's four gases. Took that rust off. No grinding. I'm gonna go ahead and paint the inside of this thing. I just painted the outside. It's looking pretty good. One coat of satin. Um, Oh, I've already scratched it. I hope it's not reacting. I think the original paint is lacquer. Looks pretty good for now. I'm going to paint the inside just to protect it. 
put a coat of paint in there and then I'll put another coat on the outside. There's the original uh, ashtray. Works perfect. It's a little rusty in there. And now I gotta try to figure to get it apart. I got two of the screws out. I wanna get rid of all that rust. I'd really like to strip the metal from the plastic. I don't know if I should risk uh, spraying the phosphoric acid on it. I just don't want to hurt the plastic. It works so well. It's in basically perfect condition. Okay, so I finally got the floor all painted black. I even painted underneath that cover. Got all the plugs in. Of course, I'm covered rub the plug short. I'll order some of those. I gotta address this uh, wiper mount. I just took all the bolts out. I don't know why it sits so far away from the hole, but it just introduces a huge gap. So, I don't know how I want to fix this because I'm not going to be able to find a gasket. But for now, I've got another issue. This wiper mount, I could just redesign this bracket and pull it flush because I'm working on the fuse boxes. I'm going to put two fuse boxes here. On my plate, but I need to cut this thing off. This wiper's just wasting too much space. It doesn't need to be a bracket four inches long. I could easily move the hole back. But uh, so I just unbolted that. So I could just redesign this whole bracket. I don't know why I can't just push that flush. It's a little tricky because all these weird angles. I'm sure I could make a new bracket. I can't have a huge hole of air going into the engine compartment. But for now, I'm getting rid of that. I'm going to have to relocate the wiper motor to here. So I can put in my new fuse box base. Oh, I was going to put it across here. Because this floor is not flat. It's three different, or it's two different heights. So I've made a little pedestal. And this piece of steel is going to sit on top, and then my fuse box is going to sit on top of that. Server breaker's on the side. So yeah, the wiper. For now, I can just cut that leg off. Now I can just simply cut this off, drill in a hole. Uh, or try to figure out how to move, how to bend this straight. How would I do that? Honestly, I'd have to... Cut this leg off. I guess cut it off here at the bend. Maybe cut this bend off. Let this motor come right up against the firewall. And then weld this one back on and weld this one back on. That's going to be really awkward in this space. Oh, you know what I could do just instead? The hell with that. Let's cut that thing off. Cut that thing off. Just put a nut cert and a nut cert and a nut cert and bolt it in from the front. And get rid of 90% of this bracket. Just bolt it straight to the firewall. Yeah, that's a great idea. Kind of like... Oh, actually, there's already three bolts. I could almost just bolt that to the firewall. Why do I need a bracket? Oh, because it's rubber mounted. I could rubber mount it here. Yeah, that would easy. That would be easy to remount. Let's, I'll keep this one. Get rid of this one and this one. Alright. Okay, I modified the... Uh, what is it? Windshield wiper mount? I decided to, which side was it? I can't even tell which one. I ended up chopping off this hole because it was in the way of the fuse box. Made a new hole, slotted it, ground it. I need to throw some new paint on there. In theory, I can put the wiper back in. I got a new idea. Maybe I'll just put a big piece of rubber, thick rubber of some kind in between to give me the seal. Just leave this as is. That'll save me a lot of headache. Uh, I think I may move it in the future, but that's a whole nother story. To make a bigger glove box. But for now, that should now be able to go back on. I'm really happy about this. Now I got my two inch square block. Got a rib nuts in. I just installed it. So now the wiper will still fit. The hood will still fit. So where's my plate now? In theory, put this piece of whatever on top. It can be cut down. I made it oversized. But in theory, you know, more space is more space. Put the wiper motor back there, put this on here, hood clears, and put my two fuse boxes on here. 
then the other cool feature is I've got at least two of these circuit breakers. I'm not going to use the factory fusible links. I couldn't figure out. I don't know. Just, I'm not going to. I'm going to use these waterproof circuit breakers instead. Oh man, I put it on backwards. I drilled holes near and they're on the wrong side. <laughs> put one there, one there. I run the power from here to the middle of the two fuse boxes and then one out to the power steering and the other one out the other one out to the fuse box super simple or I can even flip them around do things differently but uh oh, see, yep you can see the holes I stalled it upside down or backwards whatever I got. so no big deal now the tricky bit is how do I connect this to that because the fuse boxes are going to bolt to that and obviously I could take the fuse boxes off and have a hole in here to get to this to take this off. Got to make it serviceable. Um, I could just weld this to that. I have a feeling I'll regret that for some stupid reason. But like one option is welding. But I need to. Maybe I could put a bolt through two bolts right in the middle, right to there. I'll put some mounting tabs or something to connect this to that. I don't know, I'll have to figure it out. That's the hard part. All right, I think I finally figured a way to bolt the steel base onto the legs, whatever you want to call it. So the fuse box is going to go mount in the center, right in the center. So it's going to have nuts or holes on either side. So if I miss, you know, the two inch block. But uh, it's like, how do I bolt this to that? I don't want to weld tabs on here and I don't want to weld it together. So I clamped it together, put a hole in the middle because I took this fuse box apart. There's basically nothing in the middle. My first idea was to uh, go right through these holes. As you can see, they basically go through here on these corners and I could just put a bolt straight through here. Uh, I was thinking I could actually go straight through here and here and bolt straight through and bolt the fuse box in and the middle plate but that's a bad idea because then you want to take the fuse box off and it all falls apart so i want everything to be separate so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to i was going to use these there's six bolts i was going to use the outside ones but you can see they're just right on the edge of the two inch thing so that doesn't work if i used a smaller square tubing or a bigger one if there was a bigger one i would have worked so I basically got some room, so I'm just going to put some button heads or some Phillips heads, 3 millimeters. Worst case, I'm going to put a little piece of rubber underneath here, squish that down on there. That way I can mount my fuse boxes anywhere I want, and I can remove this. Two little bolts. I've got Phillips head, you know, the old Tamiya RC car 3 millimeter bolts, or I can do Allen heads. So I'll decide what to do. So now I just need, oh, the only thing bad about nut search is that this will not fit flush on this because of the stupid nut cert. Hmm. Okay, let's see if we can figure that out. All right, a little change of plans. I did three millimeter bolts and they were too small. I made it wobbly and I'd have to put, no, nah, I got rid of them. Six millimeter. Let's also put the six millimeter nuts on here. So now I can bolt on my two circuit breakers on the side which is pretty cool. Super easy to get to, out of the way. The wires are nice and short. So that's cool. I can even mount more on the back, which we already get to. And now the trick of it is, the fuse box wants to mount on top of this. So I can either get some button head six millimeters, countersink them. Shoot, I should have done five millimeters. I have a bunch of those right here. Shoot, shoot. Such an idiot. Oh, I just drilled the holes too big, I think. Could have done some five millimeters. Well, I guess I could go. I'm going to the hardware store anyways. Buy some five millimeter flats. If not, I have to put a little rubber or something. Or I could even theory just drill a hole in here and try to clearance it, but that'd be kind of uh, stupid. But I could do that. There's nothing in the middle of this thing. It's dead air. So, anyways, so uh, yeah, I'll just buy some bolts. I don't think I own any. Oh. You know what I do? Actually, that's what the door handles are. On the, I have some 8mm flathead Nissan ones. These are 6mm 
Metric. Those, that's what I need some of those. How oh, funny. Yeah, I have eight millimeter ones, but I don't have six millimeter ones. And I have five millimeter ones. I have three millimeter ones. Okay, anyways. Let's buy some new bolts. Get the fuses on here. This should now, in theory. Oh, I see I got two nut certs in there. Bolt on right there. I can always cut it down if it's too big, but the wiper motor should still fit in there. Two fuse boxes, two circuit breakers, and the hood will still close. The factory location on my D40 is like right here, so makes sense. Good play, and that's a factory place for the fuse box, anyways. I just cleaned this dash as best I could. Yeah. I should just throw a coat of paint on this thing while I have it out. I don't know. I'm just going to put it back in for a little while. Anyways, I painted the dash. came out pretty good. My big hole for the radio. I think I've already shown. I've got uh, my nut search for the glove box. I got nut certs. Oh, I didn't put in the nut certs. Oh. I haven't got the tool yet, I don't think. Where did I? No, I haven't got the tool yet. I need a four millimeter nut cert for there. But uh, I do have the nut certs in here. So these are six millimeter. I think the glove box is five. So anyways, I'm just going to bolt the dash. Back on the nut certs. And some old six millimeter Nissan bolts. All right, here's the new bolts to hold the dash, two pieces together. This little six millimeter bolt, ten millimeter head. It's got like a lush washer head. So much easier to assemble now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below if you want to see more. The truck's coming along. One coat of white paint, no clear coat yet.